I noticed something interesting on my Century ADS-B receiver the other day. I was checking out the label on the bottom, and I noticed here near the FCC ID, I saw reference to an ESP-12S. And the reason that caught my attention is I'm currently developing a product that uses an ESP-8266. And what that is, is a Wi-Fi chip with uh, an integrated microcontroller. And I thought, oh, and I know there's an ESP-12S, which is very similar to the ESP-8266 uh, I'm using. So I thought, well, this does have Wi-Fi. Uh, it's possible then that they're using an uh, ESP-12S. So I want to take a look at this thing and I want to see what's inside and what makes it, uh, what makes it work. Um, so I found that these, there's four screws in here. At first I thought they were Allen, uh, metric Allen heads, but upon closer inspection, I noticed they're actually, uh, Torx T8 heads. And I happen to have a, a T8 driver. So let's, uh, let's pull these off. And let's see what we can find in here. I'm halfway expecting to see an 82 or ESP uh, 12S. I'm also expecting to see a lithium battery, um, a lithium charging uh, cir integrated circuit. Um, of course, a GPS receiver. And, uh, and then we'll see what else it might have. I think we got it here. Yeah. Okay. Looks like we're in. Let me, uh, I don't want these screws to get lost. Pop these out, set them aside. On the top cover here, it looks like we just have a, um, there we go. We have the button, of course, and some light pipes to transmit the light from the LEDs on the circuit board. So there's not a whole lot going on here. Um, let's see what we have. So, uh, oh, okay. Uh, the battery is soldered to the circuit board. It's a single cell, looks like an 18650 lithium battery. Uh, it's soldered directly to the circuit board and then it's got some double-sided tape holding it to this piece of the case. Let me, uh, let me carefully get in here and pry that out. Okay. And let's have a look. So, yeah, okay. So, U-Blocks uh, Neo M8, that's gonna be the GPS receiver. I see a micro uh, SD card in here. So, um, I can't read the value of it. And it goes, it's inserted from this end and I can't take it out because the battery is spot welded to these tabs, which are soldered to the PCB. We have, so this isn't a ESP812S that I'm familiar with. Th this is the Wi-Fi chip here. Um, the reason I say that I don't recognize it in, as an ESP12S is the pin layout. There are a lot more pins along the perimeter of the chip than I'm used to seeing on an ESP12S. That doesn't mean it's not an ESP12S though. Uh, being that that's what's on the label, I still have to say it probably is. This, uh, there's no markings on it unless there's something underneath this decal. Uh, this number here doesn't mean anything to me. So I'm not quite sure what the chip is, but I'm still gonna say it's probably uh, one of the ESPs. Um, here, since we have our USB-C connector here, I'm going to take a guess that this chip here is the charging 
uh, possibly the charging circuit for charging the uh, the lithium battery. So we're going to take five volts in on you. Well, actually on USB C, um, you can have more than five, but um, that's going to come in there and charge the the lithium. Um, I'm gonna to have to look at the numbers of these and, and verify what they are. I might I might check out all these numbers, pause this and, and come back and uh, see what we come up with. Uh, I do know that this here is probably gonna be the, um, the triaxial, uh, it's gonna be an accelerometer, uh, magnetometer and gyro, three axis on all three. And it probably does some uh, fusion uh, on board the chip. That's gonna be for the AHARs to, to sense the orientation. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. And the rest of it here is just passives, resistors, um, capacitors. Hmm. The ping, that's gonna be their um, radio receiver, uh, the UAVionics chip for the uh, ADSB. I can't really see too deep. I don't want to bend the battery or anything. It's interesting. Okay. Uh, I'm going to pause and I'm going to look up some of these chips, uh, IDs, and data sheets and uh, see what I come up with. Okay, it took a few minutes and I looked up some of these chips that I didn't recognize the numbers on. And it turns out, so um, one thing I didn't mention, this is the, um, that's the piezo buzzer. That's what's gonna be giving you the really loud alert when a CO, uh, when the carbon monoxide re uh, exceeds a certain threshold. Uh, and then this here is the carbon monoxide uh, detector here, or sensor. So uh, this is a charging controller. So you take your power in from the USB-C connector and this controls the charging for the battery. Uh, and then this chip here is for overcharge and um, over discharge protection on a single cell lithium battery here. So if you get below a certain voltage, like 2.5 or something, um, it'll, it'll turn off, it'll disconnect the battery. And the same would happen um, on a voltage uh, higher than you know 4.5 or whatever it is, um, which I would have thought is integrated into the charging controller, but I don't know. I guess it's not. Um, yeah. So also one thing I noticed. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Um, so this is an 18650 lithium. Okay. I happen to have some of these. I use them for flashlights and other little microcontroller projects that I've worked on. What I thought was interesting is when you look at the case, so when this was in the case, it was sitting like so. And there's a little piece of double-sided sticky tape that was kind of holding it to the bottom of the case here. What I thought was interesting was as I looked at the PCB, I noticed we have the solder tabs, positive and negative, coming off of the spot welds from the battery through the circuit board and they're, they're soldered there. Well, there are also, there's a tab here, negative and positive. And I'm like, hmm, it sure looks like you could parallel two batteries. So I did a check, I checked with the voltmeter to, to see that these were in fact um, connected to each other. And I probed positive and negative and I'm getting about 4.1 volts. This battery's fully, almost fully charged. So that tells me that these are in fact um, paralleled off of each other, which means also if you look at the case, you'll see in the mold, they have these uh, little gussets here uh, that are the same diameter as the battery. So battery, you know, that's where it would sit with the battery. Well, look, there's two of them. And I'm thinking, hmm, I'll bet you I could put two batteries in here and solder it up and effectively double my battery life. So go from, what is it, 12 hours, they say, uh, to 24 hours. 
Now, I don't know why they didn't put the second battery in. At first I thought, well, maybe it has something to do with the radio antennas for ADS-B. You don't want the battery maybe shielding it, but no, that's not it because they've got the same thing going on here on this side. Uh, I don't know. Uh, possibly a future uh, version with an extra battery for more life that they can market later. I don't know. Um, maybe they just wanted to keep it under a certain amount of weight. So they just went with one battery there. there. Who knows? There could be a number of reasons. They may have thought, well, you know, when they first started designing it, we'll go with two. And then they found out later it didn't consume as much power as they thought. And they got 12 hours and they said, well, that's good enough. Um, I'm working on a product now, the same product that uses the Wi-Fi chip that kind of the same thing happened. We put a big battery in it first thinking it was going to consume more power than it did. And it turned out to have almost twice the runtime than we needed. So we can actually go with a smaller battery. So maybe something like that happened. I don't know. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I am going to parallel another 18650 on it. And I'm going to do some tests. I'm going to charge it up. And I'm going to see if what I don't get uh, 24 hours of uh, runtime on this unit. So pretty cool. You know, there's not a whole lot going on here. Um, all the magic is happening in the microcontroller. And... Uh, and then we just have the, you know, the peripherals. GPS antenna, radio receiver for ADS-B, Wi-Fi chip, CO monitor. So there's, there really isn't much here. I would say uh, cost on this, if I just had to take, I don't know the quantities they're making these things at, but um, based on a project I'm working on that has some sort of similar components, I can't imagine cost on this populated and everything it shouldn't be more than, I don't know, 80 bucks? Between 50 and 100 bucks would be my guess, depending on quantity that they're manufacturing. So not a lot. Um, the price point at 500, I guess that would be about right. I'm gonna say they're, they're building these for under $100. I'm, I'm almost positive of that. Uh, and it also depends, if they're going into China, then it's gonna be even less, but they, they might be making them here in America. I'm speculating too much. Uh, anyways, I just wanted to show you what was inside. I wanted to learn what was inside and uh, show you guys as well. Uh, I think the coolest thing that I found out about all this was I can add a second battery. Uh, it's pretty much a direct drop-in. The only thing I'm gonna need to do is uh, make some connections from the battery to uh, these holes here in the PCB. I'll probably do that with some solder braid, uh, desoldering braid. I think that might be the best way to do that. Uh, and then I'll do the same thing. I'll put a little piece of double sticky tape in there and kind of hold everything together. So there you go. Um, pretty cool. Not a whole lot going on in these, but I didn't expect it to be. And we learned that uh, I think we'll be able to run a second battery in parallel and, uh, and potentially double the, uh, the, the battery duration of this thing. So there we go. I'm going to do that. Uh, I'll do that and then after I've used it a little bit, I'll report back and let y'all know what I found out.